How hot-headed are you? I'm Nina Zhehozek and I'm delighted to share with you our work on human brain temperature and its clinical value. For decades we've known that brain cells are very sensitive to changes in temperature. Because of this, clinicians have assumed that healthy brain temperature must not vary and should be the same as the body core. Problem is, unlike many other things we monitor in patients, there is no reference range for healthy human brain temperature to compare patient data with. As a result, some patients with brain injury undergo interventions to achieve a normal brain temperature without knowing what is truly normal for the human brain. Historical data from healthy, non-human primates suggests that brain temperature varies substantially in time and space and is higher than core body temperature. To help clinicians understand and interpret brain temperature data from patients, we set out to answer a very simple question. What is the normal temperature of the human brain? Here we faced a catch-22 challenge. Brain temperature can be measured directly in patients with moderate to severe brain injury using brain probes. But the values obtained might be abnormal because of their brain injury. We cannot use brain probes in healthy humans but we can obtain very accurate and precise estimates of brain temperature using a special brain scanning technique called Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, or MRS. To explore how brain temperature varies naturally in humans, we took a double-armed approach. We started by screening data from brain-injured patients who had not undergone any interventions to modify or control their brain temperature. Since these patients are hard to find, we drew upon the Europe-wide Centre TBI database, which includes data from patients treated in several different intensive care units. Analyzing data from 114 patients, we found that brain temperature ranged from 32.6 to 42.3 degrees Celsius, and mean brain temperature exceeded body temperature. Knowing that human body temperature normally varies with a daily rhythm, we looked for such a pattern in the patients and found that only a quarter of them displayed a daily rhythm in brain temperature. To interpret the patient results, we recruited 40 healthy adults for non-invasive brain thermometry using MRS. We included 20 males and 20 females, all aged 20 to 40 years. All of our volunteers were scanned in Edinburgh, Scotland, but they originated from 15 different countries across five continents. Each volunteer was scanned in the morning, afternoon and late evening of a single day. We found that healthy brain temperature ranged from 36.1 to 40.9 degrees Celsius and mean brain temperature exceeded body temperature. Brain temperature was 0.4 to 0.8 degrees higher in females in the post-ovulation phase of their menstrual cycle relative to other females and males. Surprisingly, healthy brain temperature increased with age, especially in core brain regions, and at any given moment, temperature varied across the brain by 2.4 degrees. The highest temperatures were observed in the thalamus, a region located right in the centre of the brain. Importantly, brain temperature varied by time of day, especially in core regions, and was lowest at night, just before bedtime. Having established that human brain temperature should vary normally by time of day, we use this new information to test the clinical relevance of brain temperature monitoring in brain injured patients. Whilst maximum and minimum brain temperatures did not predict survival, we found that patients lacking a daily rhythm in brain temperature had a 21-fold greater chance of dying in intensive care. Consistent with many other studies, we found that ageing by 10 years increased the odds of death 11-fold. But in contrast to some other studies, a warmer average brain temperature was associated with survival. In summary, we found that human brain temperature is higher and varies more than previously assumed by age, sex, menstrual cycle, brain region and time of day. So, whether the brain temperature value obtained from a patient is abnormal or not, depends on many things. This has major implications for temperature monitoring and management, with brain temperature rhythmicity emerging as one of the strongest single predictors of survival after traumatic brain injury. We propose that daily brain temperature variation, not absolute brain temperature, better distinguishes normal brain function from its dysfunction. 
Further studies are needed to determine whether a daily rhythm in brain temperature is critical to brain health. But our findings certainly raise questions about whether temperature-based interventions are appropriate for patients with traumatic brain injury, and if so, when and how they should be applied. Fundamentally, these results transform how we should think about human brain temperature, how it is normally controlled, how its variation might be interpreted in patients with brain injury, and how its variation might change with healthy ageing and in age-related disease. Moreover, knowing how much human brain temperature varies normally allows us to better model acute and chronic brain disorders in the lab using human brain cells grown in a dish. The brain is our most precious machine. Understanding the conditions under which it performs best will enable us to keep the brain healthier for longer and further our understanding of how the brain works. Thank you for watching.